Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. If you're unsure how to wire one of these PSUs in then stick around because that's what we're going to be going through today. So in a previous video I spoke about upgrading the spindle on the 3018 Pro and at the same time I also referenced upgrading the PSU or the power supply unit at the same time because they do relate to each other. If you want more of an explanation I'll put a link up in the corner to the video. But after that video went out I got a lot of questions about how to wire those new PSU units up to the 3018 Pro. And that's what we're going to cover today. It's going from one of these black box units that typically comes with the machine to a more upgraded PSU like this. And if you're interested I'll put a link in the description to the one I'm using today. Now before we start looking at wiring that up, I do need to reference safety. If you're not confident enough or competent enough to be messing with electronics like this, then please don't do it. Whilst the output voltage is relatively low on these, the input voltage is still high, but it's the amps that are the issue. Less than one amp can kill you. So as I say, if you're not confident or competent, then get somebody in to help you or get someone to do it for you. Now with the safety announcement out of the way, let's move on to taking a closer look at this and how we got it wired up. So we need a few things to make this work. Obviously we need the PSU, we then need a way to get power to the PSU and from the PSU to the 3018 Pro. Now for me this begins with a 3 pin plug. Obviously I'm in the UK but different countries have different plugs and some are only 2 pin. But for me it's an earth, a neutral and a live. And therefore, I need a cable that also has three cores to supply the PSU. Now, don't worry about the different components I'm referencing. I'll put them all in the description below, just so you can reference them later. So the cable I need is a three-core 0.75 mil to supply the input. And each of the cores of the cable reference a particular pin. So again, we have earth, neutral, and live. Now, the colours of these cables are to UK standard, but different countries may have different colour um, references, so obviously use the ones suitable for your country. Now, on the output, we only have two cables because we don't need the earth. And what we have is a live and a neutral. The cable is also a little bit thinner, so this is two core 0.5mm cable. And on the end of this cable, what we have is a jack connector, and this is what allows it to connect directly to the control board. Now, the particular jack connector needed is a 5.5 to a 2.5 male DC jack connector. Now, if you're purchasing these individually, they may look something like this. And all you simply do, unthread the sleeve, you would then slide the wire through the sleeve and out the other end, and connect it to the terminal itself. Now, on the, on the connector are two terminals, a short one, which is for the live, and a longer one, which is for the negative. You would then, or neutral, sorry, and you would then slide the sleeve back up, just re-thread it on, and that's that connector done. Now, if you're like me, and you ended up upgrading the PSU because your original black box failed, you can simply just cut the cables off that black box and throw the black box away. So as you'll see, because these are all sealed units already on here, I simply just cut the power cable off and then the output cable and use them to wire it directly to this. But now if we take a look, close look at the PSU itself, now there are nine terminals across here and they're each marked up with what, they, uh, what they're used for. So starting on the far side, we have L for live, we then have N for neutral, we then have the e earth symbol for the earth cable. The next six terminals are for the output. And what this means is you have three pairs of output. So as I mentioned previously in the spindle video, this one PSU can supply three different devices. So you can run your control board and your spindle off two separate output ports. Now, the, uh, the first three are the negative or neutral, and then the next three are the positive or live. To actually connect to them themselves, you simply lift the plate up and you can release the screw and clamp plate just by undoing them. Now, to connect the wires themselves, you've got two choices. You can use terminal connectors like these, either the little circle ones or the U-shaped ones, and they will simply go straight into the ports like that. Or you can strip back the wire, so you've got the exposed copper wire, and then you put that in between the clamp plate and simply tighten the clamp plate back up. 
Now, if you are using the strip back wire method, just make sure all the wire goes into the terminal and if possible, it's wrapped around the screw and under the clamp plate to make sure it's tight in there. You don't want any exposed copper wire sticking beyond these little terminal ports because that's where it's more likely to cause issues you know, with exposed electrical wiring. And that's what this little flat plate is also for. It's just to protect those terminals. If you do have a 3D printer, it's worth printing an additional cover to go all around this just to stop dust and give it additional protection. At the end of the terminals, you'll also see a little dial. And this dial can be adjusted by pouring a screwdriver into it and turning it left or right. This dial is to control the voltage output. So even though these are a 24 volt output, they sometimes run a little bit high or a little bit low. So if you've got something like a multimeter, you can test the output of these PSUs and dial that in until you get the exact 24 volts that you're after. Now the other thing to mention on these units is they have a little switch to go from 110 volt to 220 volt, obviously depending what country you're in. And that really is how simple it is to wire these in. I know there's a lot of questions and people think you need wiring diagrams, but they are straightforward because everything is marked up on them. So hopefully that helps a few of you out that we're inquiring about the upgraded PSUs. It's not that difficult, but as I say, if you're not confident or not competent, take it to someone that can do it or get somebody in that can help you out. I will always try and help everyone as much as I can, but if there are questions on specific country regulations to the wiring, obviously that's not something that I can answer. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It always helps. I'll see you all in the next video.